Welcome to Opalesque Television. I'm here in Sao Paulo, very exciting city. It's a wonderful country, Brazil, and I am in the offices of Safdie Group, together with Otavio Vera, who is the head of investments. Otavio, please tell us your background. What are you doing at Safdie and what is Safdie Group all about? I'm director of investments here. The group as a whole has seven billion dollars under management. We are wealth managers with many uh, branches. Our headquarters are in Geneva with uh, branches in Lugano and in Zurich. We have representative offices in Mexico City, Buenos Aires, uh, Montevideo, Panama City. So it's a Swiss group owned by a Brazilian family that has a very strong presence in Latin America. Brazil is really growing and every time I come here it seems things are different. Otavio, tell us more about the macro outlook for Brazil. Yeah, Brazil is passing through a very special moment in its history. I think the democracy is being consolidated for at least 15 years and in terms of economic outlook uh, things are getting better and better. Brazil passed through the crisis very well as uh, the country did not have much leverage and also the consumers. So uh, Brazil now is net creditors on its debt, the foreign debt, the public foreign debt. In terms of the corporations, they are not so leveraged. So it's one of the reasons why uh, Brazil is now growing at uh, at least uh, 6% a year. And uh, of course, the inflation is being is going high, but it's not uh, anything that we can compare with the past of hyperinflation here. So we are growing in a very good way. The inflation is not skyrocketing and uh, credit is growing. Five years ago, we had like 25% of jet, uh, credit to GDP. Now this number is approaching uh, 45. So there is a mass of people that are being included in the consumption and they are consumer all kinds of goods, uh, cellular phones, insurance, medical plans. So this social inclusion is transforming the country very rapidly. So I, I believe Brazil will assume a much uh, larger role in the future in terms of uh, geopolitical issues and others. In terms of the fi financial markets, the central bank now is uh, like we'll have to increase interest rates. The total uh, increase will be like uh, 300 basis points. That is not much. With these interest rates, we have uh, conditions to continue to grow in a good pace. Now we have the lowest uh, real and normal interest rates in the, in, in the history of the country, uh, even though it's still very high. So as these rates will be compressed in the future, we will experience another round of social inclusion. So uh, I think it's a continuing process. Even though we have some worries here, the government spending is increasing from eight years. Lula government is being very keen on uh, increasing public spending. This is a problem. We have also problems related to infrastructure, but I think this kind of things are manageable and probably the next president will take care about this issue. Yes, a question here. Apart from the inclusion of um, more and more people into a middle class, what else is driving the Brazilian economy going forward? What are the factors? Actually, the commodity prices are increasing and these uh, like providing condition to a lot of Brazilian companies to, to grow. Uh, the access to capital, being foreign capital and also domestic capital, a lot of IPOs are happening in Brazil. Brazil uh, last year was the, the, the third largest place in terms of uh, volume of IPOs. Uh, so liquidity is around uh, and also liquidity regarding derivatives. Uh, the Brazilian Bovespa is uh, today the fifth larger stock exchange in the world. So a lot of derivative contracts and uh, a lot of uh, over-the-counter also contracts are, are being negotiated on a daily basis. 
So with this uh, commodity boom, coupled with uh, good economic conditions, these factors are creating a very good environment. Other than that, Brazil has a very good trade that is the financial market. We didn't have any bankruptcy on the financial market here in, in 2008. The financial system is pretty well regulated and also the asset management industry. So with uh, these conditions up to the central bank and to the Brazilian SEC, that is the CVM, to control the system, I believe that our growth and our capacity to continue to have this type of agenda will be uh, permanent. How can international investors participate in the Brazil stories? What vehicles can they pick and select? There is liquidity around. So for an uh, international investor, uh, there are many ways to participate. Being on offshore vehicles, on uh, global bonds, on sovereign bonds, and through ETFs, the EWC is very popular and liquid, through ADRs. Uh, a lot of uh, Petrobras, for example, is the most liquid ADR of the world. And uh, there are a lot of over-the-counter options, uh, even to participate on uh, bonds denominated in AIs, uh, inflation-linked bonds, for example, if it, it's a peak. Other than that, you can buy Brazilian hedge funds. There are a lot of Brazilian managers with offshore structures. We have uh, also equity loan-only funds being distributed in Luxembourg, Japan, Korea, on international platforms, private banks, for example. So, there's an array of options. In order to participate in certain specific assets, uh, for example, to have a private equity exposure, sometimes the international investor needs to have a certain bank in order to manage this relationship within the company or buying some assets locally. So for the fixed income side, that is a 2% tax. That is a thing that the, the government created during this year. And uh, it's a kind of thing to prevent the real to, to continue to appreciate a lot against the dollar or the euro. So even though we assume there is not a good measure uh, the government did and the international investor needs to, to cope with this 2% uh, tax on uh, fixed income if they want to buy, for example, a, a local fund or a local fixed income instrument. But only for the fixed, fixed income side. For the equity side, uh, is like uh, uh, free of charge in terms of taxation so that for investor can go and buy Brazilian equities w without any taxation. But There's no 15% capital gains tax? Yes, no uh, capital gains. Uh, the 15% the is just for the, the local investors. For the local investors? Yes, definitely. And this is important because many companies, they don't have ADR programs. So the mid-caps and the small-cap companies in general, they don't have an ADR listed abroad. So it's one of the reasons why they, they are coming to to Brazil. Also, the, as I mentioned, the, the private equity funds, there are a lot of private equity funds here. Real estate is another option that is becoming very popular for investors to buy just land or to buy properties here, many reasons. So there is many options, but the, the, the first thing is to define the mandate because I'm in touch with a lot of foreign investors, sometimes they would like to have some kind of exposure, but they don't know what is the purpose of this exposure. Just to participate on the equity side, so it's better to have just an ETF. The EWZ is, is perfect for that purpose. But if it's to have a more general or more broad exposure, sometimes a combination of local assets with international assets, offshore assets, it will be better. So in general, we, we recommend for these uh, for investors to have a, a, an advisor or a specialized firm to help with this task.
Hedge funds in Brazil are called multimercados, right? Can you tell us more about the universe of multimercados in Brazil? So how do they work? Uh, what are their regulations? What are their advantages and disadvantages? And then, of course, how do they work in conjunction with an offshore vehicle? How many Brazilian managers do have an offshore vehicle? Matias, is a very good question. 